Well, Tucker Carlson has finally did it. He went full Alex Jones, and now his show is essentially indistinguishable from InfoWars. At least when it comes to vaccines, he's saying the, saying the same exact thing that Alex Jones says. But the difference is that he's not saying this on some obscure platform, on some obscure website. He's saying this on the most popular news platform in the country. And to say that Fox News is news is... A misstatement but that's what a lot of people still view them as so when they consume fox news they believe that they're actually getting an authoritative news source but that's not the case so take a look at what tucker carlson and especially his guest has to say and um you're gonna see that within this short clip they disseminate so much misinformation that i don't even know where to begin to push back against it but we're, we're certainly gonna try so take a look uh, it's we're at a very dangerous moment, Tucker. And, you know, I, I I'm not exaggerating. I think this is probably the most important appearance I've had with you in the last two years. Um, it is it is completely clear now that uh, the vaccines don't really work at all against Omicron um, in, in in these highly vaccinated and highly boosted countries. Uh, rates of infection are incredibly high and rates of serious disease and death are also rising. The Israelis are predicting that they're going to have more serious cases than they ever had at the peak last year. Um, and, and the idea that we would solve this with another booster is, is just off the charts insane. I have not said this to you before because I'm pretty careful and I'm pretty careful with the data, but these vaccines, these mRNA vaccines, the mRNA COVID vaccines need to be withdrawn from the market now. No one should get them. No one should get boosted. No one should get double boosted. They are a dangerous and ineffective product at this point against Omicron. The spike that they make your body make that you then produce antibodies to is not the Omicron spike. And earlier today, Tony Fauci said, we're not gonna give people monoclonal antibody products, because the first generation products, because they don't work against the Omicron spike. The same logic applies to these mRNA vaccines and giving people boosters even if in the very short term it knocks down infection rates, there's a boomerang effect, and that's what they're seeing in all these countries. We are at a dangerous moment, and these products need to be withdrawn. When you say, so you say they're ineffective, and that's demonstrable to anybody who lives in this country, everyone you know who's had it, you know, has had COVID. So, so yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. There was so much bullshit there that basically every single word they said was either a misrepresentation of the truth or an outright lie. And to suggest that we take the mRNA vaccines off the market, to put it lightly, that would be extremely fucking stupid. Extremely stupid. So Alex Berenstein, his guest, said that vaccines don't really work against Omicron. Now, I love that. He's saying this when it was the people who were pushing for vaccines like myself who had been warning that as viruses usually do, they tend to mutate and it's almost inevitable that we're going to see a new strain that evades the immunity that we get from the vaccines. And then when that happened, these fuckers used that to bolster their anti-vax point. No, that was the reason why we needed to vaccinate people quicker. To be fair, anti-vaxxers aren't the only problem. There's also the issue of global vaccine equity, vaccine apartheid. But that was the reason why we needed to vaccinate people. So it stops spreading as quickly and we reduce the probability that a new variant that evades vac vaccines emerges. But they don't see it that way. They see that as evidence that the vaccines are bad. Interesting. Now, he claims that the vaccines don't really work against Omicron. And it's true that it is the case, at least based on preliminary findings, that your chance of getting infected with Omicron, you know, you're not really helped with the vaccine that much. But still, what's really, really important, a key detail that he left out is that the vaccinations are still preventing serious illness and hospitalizations. Yes, their efficacy has diminished, but they're still incredibly important against the fight to stop Omicron. So let's look at the data here. Now, this is all just preliminary. Keep that in mind. But this is still really important. This is from Healthline. Few real-world studies so far have managed to estimate effectiveness for the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, and a number of lab studies show that a booster increases antibody production significantly. The studies are largely laboratory studies that would indicate that levels of antibody induced by boosting will have a noteworthy impact on preventing serious illness, said Schaffner. A preprint study conducted by Oxford University reported that two doses of 
the AstraZeneca or Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines offered little protection against infection with the Omicron variant. However, a real-life study from South Africa found that two doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine still protected people from severe disease. Researchers found that two doses provided 70% protection against hospitalization and 33% protection against infection. This was a drop from about 93% and 80% respectively for the Delta variant. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine echoed these figures, finding that a two-dose regimen of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine was 70% effective against hospitalization with Omicron. So yes, protection against getting infected has diminished. That's what the data shows. But what's really important, which they left out, is that you are still protected, substantially so, from severe illness and hospitalization. That matters. So yes, you absolutely should still get the vaccine, even if you know you could still get infected and you might see a breakthrough case. You still protect yourself from a severe infection. What don't these people get about this? And you don't even have to look at these studies. Just look at the numbers. So this data, keep in mind, is a couple of weeks old. This is from January 6th. But the data clearly indicates that it's the unvaccinated people are still getting seriously sick from Omicron. So this is from the state of New York. So as you can see in January hospitalizations, they did increase among people who are vaccinated. Yes, that is true. But take a look at the line of people who are unvaccinated. They are 14 times Higher. Again, this is in January, once Omicron had taken over in the United States. This is really important. Now, moving on to the second chart from the same data set, also from January 6th, looking at Virginia, Colorado, Utah, Connecticut, and Minnesota. This is the weekly admission rates per 100,000. So as you can see, the unvaccinated are far more likely to go to the hospital compared to people who are vaccinated. And looking at the percent of admissions from South Carolina, Montana, and Mississippi, it's the unvaccinated who are disproportionately being admitted to the hospital. So to say that the vaccines are useless is an imbecilic statement to make. And this is anecdotal evidence. But I talked about earlier in the week how basically half my family, uh, everyone in my immediate family got infected with COVID-19. I was exposed, but I did not get infected. Uh, but every single person is feeling better now. They're all vaccinated. And do you want to know what they said? I talked to them yesterday that they were so thankful that they got vaccinated because they couldn't imagine how bad they would have felt if they didn't get vaccinated. My mom was very sick, even if she was vaccinated. My niece, she's young and she was also very sick. They're still kind of dealing with extreme fatigue, but they both told me they couldn't imagine what they would have felt if they didn't get the vaccine. Now, my nephew, who's three years old, not old enough to be vaccinated, he was very sick. He did have to go to urgent care. Thankfully, he is now recovering. He still kind of has a lingering cough that essentially affects him at night, makes it more difficult to sleep. But he did have to go to the hospital. Thankfully, he's better. But if you look at this, this whole picture here, after seeing maybe, I don't know, 10, 11 people, Vac uh, uh, vaccinated in my family but get infected i'm very thankful that they were vaccinated because it helped them not get severely sick now one person in my family who is not vaccinated also just tested positive so i really hope that that works out well for him because this is a good person even if i disagree with him not getting vaccinated i would be so distraught if anything happened to him so you know the vaccines help that's anecdotal evidence, and we also looked at the data. They help. So for this idiot to say that on national television, he should really feel ashamed of himself. But these people have no shame. He said that the mRNA COVID vaccines need to be withdrawn from the market. No one should get them. No one should get boosted. No one should get double boosted. They are a dangerous and ineffective product at this point. This misinformation is so dangerous. I don't even know how to describe it. Again, it's Alex Jones level nonsense, outright fabrications based on nothing, based on their own conspiratorial deluded views. And Tucker Carlson said, you say that they're ineffective. That's demonstrable to anyone who's lived in this country, anyone who's had it and uh, had COVID. Most of them are, are fine. The audio kind of cut out at the end, but that's what he said. To say that they're ineffective just because we see more breakthrough cases is just so deluded. What really matters is that people are not dying from COVID-19. Of course, we want to prevent breakthrough infections if we can. Hopefully, a new booster will address that. 
but the goal is to save lives. And the vaccines, by and large, are still protecting people, at least from severe illness. And, and for Tucker Carlson to say that, I mean, what's next? Is he going to start talking about fucking human-animal hybrids, as Alex Jones did? I mean, this is where we're at right now. Tucker Carlson is in Alex Jones territory, and he is the most popular broadcaster in the country. So how many people are going to become exponentially more conspiratorial because they're listening to somebody who they believe is a legitimate news source who's just gone full Alex Jones. And it's not like uh, Tucker Carlson wasn't bad before, right? Him espousing the great replacement conspiracy theory that is extremely damaging to the country. But now he's, he's spreading medical misinformation, outright fabricating things. It's just the, the harm that he's doing to the country is irreparable. I don't know that you can unbrainwash the generation that he has brainwashed. It's just truly sad to think about. But either way, I'll do my part in pushing back. But I mean, you can see how difficult it is because people who spread misinformation, they blast so much out at once. It's almost the form of gish galloping where they just, they hit you with so much bullshit that you're almost forced to let some of it go and choose what you really want to focus on, the most damaging statements. But it's so hard. This is why it permeates throughout the country because it's it's so it's so common and it's being spread on the most popular news show in America it's it's demoralizing to say the least